So what sort of tips do you have for someone interested in getting into barefoot running? Start slowly. Build in real gently and let the skin with the pad on your feet be your guide. with a natural stride. To do that, it's best to start entirely out of a shoe, if possible. Are you anti-shoes? Not at all. Shoes are great tools. They can help us for the right conditions, the right time, depending on training, depending on weather. The right shoe can be the greatest tool in the world for running. But to learn how to run properly, run well, strong and healthy for life, you got to build up the feet. Any other advice to share? Become a great slow runner. If you're running, you're coming to me and walk in the shoe. You're running out of your foot, but you're good. It's what's natural. That's what we did as a child. Go back to running like you were a child again. Have fun. Thanks. Running on varying terrains and uphills, I'm a much faster runner than with a shoe on. If you think about it, your average spin out shoe, you're gonna lift 180 strides a minute. You're gonna be lifting over 100 pounds a minute, about 120 pounds. Times that by an hour of running. equivalent of a couple automobiles on your back to lift that shoe. Instead you're running barefoot, all that energy savings gets put into moving it forward. Do your feet ever get injured? I got a piece of glass on my foot one time when I was showing off during a snowstorm. I didn't want to brush off my feet when I knew I had stepped on something. When my feet were cold, the ground was soaked, and my pads were soaked from salt that had been spread onto the sidewalk. Had I taken a moment to brush off my feet, nothing would have happened. Instead, I had a tiny piece of glass go in that I had to get out after the run. I did it myself at home. Not a big deal. 
And that's the only piece of glass I've ever got. Other than that, they get tired and sore. This is my second run for today, Barefoot. I'll be turning back soon. And my feet and my pads have told me that I've had just about enough. That's the key to all running, and in particular, barefoot running. Be aware of your body. When you can feel the ground, you're more aware, you're less likely to over there. How far do you run? We got 10 to 20 miles a day. It really depends on how my body feels rather than what the training schedule says. Training schedule tends to get us in trouble. We're great as a guide coach, and it's excellent to have goals. But if you rely too much, on what any run or any paper tells us to do, it's too easy to go too far, too fast, or do too much because that's what's telling us to do. Instead, if you listen to your body, if it says you're tired, go home. If you're out on a run and you're going, hmm, maybe I should stop, turn around, go back. I don't believe that we're tired, wimpy people. Instead, we don't listen to our bodies and instead drive them into the ground and get very sore. Then we try to push through the pain to prove we're strong when we're just breaking our bodies down. If instead we listen and let our bodies coach us and listen to that still small voice inside our heads, call it gut, intuition, or whatever you may, we won't do too much. Is barefoot running just for runners and athletes? <laughs> I think we're all athletes. We're a running tribe. We're a running people. Check out Born to Run by Chris McDougall or many other books on the history of running. We were born to run, to dance, to hunt, to survive. We're all athletes. That's what we were meant to do. It's for everyone. It's the healthiest thing in the world is aerobic activity each and every day. And there's nothing easier to do over the long run than barefoot running. Take no equipment. <laughs> We've got a fan back there. What did he say? Something about how fast we're going. No specialized equipment. You can start from scratch. Heck, maybe if you want when they get up on the street. On that note, I'm going to stop and stretch for a minute.